the Rock of Gibraltar. Standing at the entrance of the Mediterranean is a monolith of limestone. At 426 meters, it rises majestically over the straits. In the present day, Gibraltar is a flourishing modern city with a population of 30,000 coming and going, living their daily lives. Unbeknownst to many, a vast and complex group of caves crisscrosses the inside of the rock, formed over millennia by the elements that have battered the mighty stem. With 214 officially recorded sites, Gibraltar has one of the highest concentrations of caves in the world for its size. Full of intrigue, wonder and natural beauty, these natural hollows offer an opening to another way of seeing the rock, an underground Gibraltar. From 1939 to 1945, the great powers of the world were involved in what was the greatest and most destructive conflict in human history. World War II involved the participation of over 100 million people from 30 countries in a state of total war that stretched over numerous campaigns, from the islands of the Pacific to the frozen fields of the Soviet Union and the deserts of North Africa. Although mostly untouched by the devastation of war, Gibraltar's strategic position at the entrance of the Mediterranean made it a vital forward mounting base for the Allies' large-scale operations in North Africa. And Gibraltar's harbour allowed for British naval superiority of the Mediterranean and the Atlantic. As part of the war effort, a vast network of tunnels was blasted out of the great hulk of stone, transforming the rock into a fortress that was designed to withstand the threat of all-out war. Phil Smith from the Gibraltar Museum gives us a tour of this impressive system of man-made tunnels. The history of tunnelling in Gibraltar dates back to the Great Siege when Sergeant Major Henry Ince and his soldier artificers built what we know today as the Great Siege Tunnels at the north end of the rock but the vast majority of Gibraltar's tunnel system was built just before and during the Second World War. Because of the threat of a German invasion on Gibraltar, they decided to build a city inside the rock. There are over 50 kilometers of tunnels in Gibraltar, and most of these would have been used to house a garrison of up to 17,000 soldiers inside the rock with everything they needed to survive. Initially, this was for a period of three months, but later that was extended to an entire year. So they needed hospitals, kitchens, canteens, sleeping rooms, water and fuel storage tanks, a complete city inside the rock. This is one of the longest tunnels inside the rock. It's called the Great North Road, and it runs north-south through the middle of the rock. It's like the central spine that all these separate chambers would come off to provide living space for the garrison. So you can imagine what this area would have been like 70 years ago with all the soldiers in here. It functioned just like an ordinary barrack, so there would have been men marching up and down, vehicles passing, people would have been moving stores and equipment. Men would go off to work each morning, assisting the engineers to clear away the rubble, and then there would be the inevitable guard duty. And then some free time, the men would go into the sleeping rooms and read a book, write a letter home, or play cards, that seems to have been a popular thing for the soldiers to do at that time. The Rock of Gibraltar is made of limestone. It's a fairly soft rock, and so to build these tunnels, the engineers would drill in small holes, which are then packed with explosives, and they would use these then to blast out the tunnels. Small tunnels for pedestrian use only were eight feet by eight feet, and to build those tunnels, four engineers using two drills would operate an eight-hour shift and would drill about four to five feet of tunnel per shift. This is a larger tunnel, this is for vehicle access, and these tunnels were 12 feet by 12 feet, so for these, three teams of two engineers would do about the same amount of tunneling, four to five feet per shift. 
Mostly the limestone is very even, so as long as you get an arched roof, it's self-supporting. But certain areas, there are fault lines, and this would mean that rock could collapse in. So areas like the one behind me have a concrete roof section put on to increase the stability. This tunnel's called the Great North Road. Some people believe that it was named after Admiral North, who was one of the naval commanders here in Gibraltar. But I don't think so. I think it's named after the Great North Road, which was an, originally a Roman road in Britain that went up the spine of Britain from south to north. And this is borne out by the fact that as we move up here, areas are named after cities in Britain which appear going up northwards on the Great North Road. So we have, for example, areas named after Peterborough, Doncaster and Durham, cities in the north of England. We can see that this tunnel here is very much wider. Further down it was just a single lane so that one truck could move north or south, but here there's an area at the side where vehicles could park up and this made it more of a two-way system. The tunnels were originally only designed to have a few years lifespan until the Second World War was won but the tunnels are still used today for training purposes. Many people thought that tunnel warfare was a thing in the past, but a few years ago the war in Afghanistan showed that with modern air warfare, modern bomb systems, other troops will operate from within tunnel systems, and so that's why people do come to Gibraltar and do train in tunnel warfare. As you travel around Gibraltar, you'll see in Camp Bay and other areas, netting like this being used for cliff stabilisation. But it's actually anti-torpedo and anti-submarine netting. During the Second World War, special Italian naval troops launched attacks on ships in Gibraltar's harbour using small two-man submarines. To counter-effect that, the Navy used this netting and they would pull it across the harbour entrances to stop the mini-submarines from getting in and therefore they were able to keep the British fleet safe. So here we are in Hayes Level and here we can see some of the tools that the engineers used to build the tunnels. The Royal Engineers formed special tunnelling companies and the men were former coal miners or soft rock miners because they were already skilled to do the work. The British engineers used a dry drilling system where they would make holes in the shape of a wedge that they would then pack with explosives with a different series of lines and the way they would do it was they would explode the charges in the middle first that would create a wedge in the stone and then when they set off the later charges that would collapse in and that was the system used for making the narrow tunnels and the narrow chambers but there was also a detachment of Canadian Royal Engineers they had a special diamond tip drill that had to be water cooled as well to stop it overheating and with the special diamond tip drill you were able to drill holes that were much longer and make the large chambers so the British engineers built more of the small chambers at the north end of the rock the Canadians built the large hospitals and the large ammunition storage areas in the south end of the rock and some of these areas are the size of a football pitch and freestanding 20-30 meters high but with no supports because the limestone is very even and very good quality Inside the tunnels, the soldiers were completely protected against bullets or bombs, but they weren't protected against the weather. The limestone of the rock is porous, so when it rains on the outside, depending where you are, a few hours or days later, it will rain inside. So to keep the soldiers dry, they imported these standard army Nissen huts from Britain and put those inside to keep the soldiers warm and dry. But the standard design was to have clear glass, and they were worried that the soldiers 
would be affected psychologically by just looking through the window and just seeing rock all the time. So the solution here was to fit frosted glass so you would have the light coming from the outside so it would look like daylight but you wouldn't be able to see the tunnel. Psychologically that made life a lot better for the soldiers here.